Okay, good morning everybody. Um, before we start, I would like to remind everyone present that the meeting will be recorded and that the recording will subsequently be available for public listening from the Dumfries and Galloway Council website. So, good morning and welcome to the meeting of the local review body of 16th of January 2013. I can confirm the meeting has been properly called and is correct. Firstly, I would like to ask members to appoint a chairman for this meeting. Could I nominate Councillor Maitland? Okay, thank you. Can I ask Councillor Maitland to join me? Um, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I would like to welcome everybody to this particular review. Um, and um, we've, you've got the severance, you know who you've got. Um, and I've got to ask at this point for any declarations of interest. No declarations of interest, thank you very much. Um, Clark, would you be kind enough to take us through the documents and the papers, please? Certainly, I can. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that we have one notice of review for consideration at this meeting, this being item four, Croft Corner, Mikkel Ricorn, Dalbiti, refusal planning permission for erection of dwelling house and agricultural storage building, installation of septic tank and soakaway system, formation of access and turning area and landscaping, 12P2-0092. Your main documents in your papers are your notice of review dated 24th of September 2012, the report of handling observations of the appointed officer and on, on the applicant's notice of review, comments of the applicant received 26th of October 2012 on the observations of the appointed officer the planning application form dated 9th of March 2012 and we submitted plans. The decision notice from Dumfries and Galloway Council dated 25th of June 2012 and also relevant extracts from Dumfries and Galloway structure plan and the structure local plan and a copy of supplementary planning guidance for the built environment. Plus photos of the application site and locality. So the grounds stated in the grounds of refusal on page 132 were that it has not been demonstrated that a new dwelling house is essential at this location for the needs of the agricultural contracting business operating from the site, nor any other need requiring an appropriate rural location. The proposal, therefore, contravenes the requirements of Dumfries and Galloway Structure Plan Policy D4 and Structure Local Plan General Policy 15. And to that form, proportions and general design of the proposed dwelling house will be inappropriate at this rural lo location in the East Structure Coast National Scenic Area and would be harmful to visual amenity and the area's scenic and landscape character contrary to structure plan policies D4, D36 and E1 and structure local plan general policies 7, 15 and 41. The requested method of determination in the notice of review are the applicant has requested that the review be dealt with on the basis of further written submissions, on the basis of one or more hearing sessions, by means of an inspection of the land, which is subject of the review. The grounds stated by the applicant in the notice of review are in summary, that the applicant does not consider that correct procedure for followed on a number of grounds, and he has not given an opportunity to amend the house 
design before a decision was made. He considers the submitted design and access statement was not considered by the appointed officer. He considers that all drawings appear to have been refused prior to determination. He submits that another planning application for a dwelling house for an agricultural consultant at Vicar Hill Glen Luce 11P10074 was approved by the Planning Applications Committee. He submits a justification, a justification for agricultural need for the dwelling house at this location on pages 17 and 19. We also have um, further comments of interested parties being comments of the appointed officer, Mr. Robert Duncan, area planning manager on pages 75 to 80 and comments of the applicant on the observations of the appointed officer on pages 81 to 90. As stated before, you also have relevant development plan policies. Uh, these are on pages 49 to 50. And, <coughs> excuse me, relevant material considerations, um, pages 135 to 147, got the supplementary planning guidance number two, design guidance for the built environment. So the main issues for the local review body to consider are, does the proposal conform with the relevant development plan policies and critically in terms of structure plan policy D4E, has it been satisfactorily demonstrated, A, that there is a sufficient justification for a house for an agricultural, agricultural contractor as opposed to an agricultural operation of a farm unit in terms of the council policies and B, if so, has it been demonstrated that it is essential and not merely desirable that a house be sited at this specific location? B, is the design and visual impact of the proposal acceptable in the context, especially given its locations within the boundaries of both a national scenic area and a regional scenic area? C, are there any material considerations which would indicate that planning permission should be granted as an exception to policy and d what weight of any should be claimed to the, given to the claim precedents of the vicar hill glen loose case and e what weight of any should be given to the claim deficiencies in the processing of the application noting the response of the appointed officer to these claims so Having outlined the documents within the members' papers, it now falls to the local review body to determine whether it has sufficient information to consider the review. It is confirmed that there would be no representations from any party that will be heard today. The local review body has the following options. It can decide it has sufficient information before it to enable it to determine the review today. It can request further information in the form of written representations. The local review body would have to state precisely what information it was seeking and who would provide it. Resolve to hold a hearing, again specifying who would be invited to speak and on what matters. Or resolve to hold a site visit, accompanied or unaccompanied. This can be done in conjunction with any of the above procedures but would obviously not allow a decision to be made today. So if the local review body resolves that it has sufficient information and that no further procedure is required, then under section 43A15, the local review body has the full power powers to uphold, reverse or vary a determination and section 43A12A requires that the decision notice includes a statement of the terms in which the planning authority has decided the case reviewed. You have a planning advisor present at your meeting. Mr. Sutty is here to assist. It is confirmed that he has not had any involvement in the case as not the case officer or the appointed officer. He is purely here to provide independent advice as needed on matters of planning policy, law or process to the local review body. So if members are clear and if no further clarification is required, I will ask the chairman now to lead the debate for the local review body in the first instance to determine whether they have sufficient information before them. Okay. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, the clerk's notes are very elaborate and, and lengthy, and uh, you will note, members, that the next bit 
Item 6 is that the LRB reviews and concludes. So it's really quite a short, sharp instruction for us after that lengthy introduction. Um, members, we've been asked um, to consider whether or not we've got sufficient information in front of us to determine this um, review, to determine this here today. And uh, I know that um, Councillor Hislop, Councillor Dick, you'll have been through the papers. What's your opinion? Do you feel we're in a position to deal with this today? Councillor Dick. Uh, I'd be of the opinion that we have sufficient information in front of us and that we should determine it today. I would concur with that view. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Um, in which case, um, I would suggest that we go back to the clerk's notes and we look at the uh, paragraph starting off with the main issues of the local review body to consider. Um, and in the first instance, you'll see the um, suggestions here that we must consider whether or not the proposal conforms with the relevant development plan po policies. And in particular, I would suggest that we should consider um, uh, in the light of what has been asked for in the review, the notice of review, the reasons for review, um, we must make certain that we cover those particular aspects to the satisfaction of the applicant. Um, so here we have um, members. I would ask you, I think, in the first instance um, to look at the proposal and to think about structure plan policy D for E, which I think is on page 137, which is the, um, keep me right, Mr. Sutty, I've got the right thing there, have I not? Um, and we're looking in particular at, um, it's called five here, that the house can be shown to be essential at that location for the needs of agriculture or other uses requiring an appropriate rural location. Have I got that right? That's correct. Right. Um, now, members, if we look at the um, application, um, is, there any, is there any reason, or have you got any uh, particular suggestion um, why the planning officer did not come to the correct conclusion with respect to that part of the review? Dick. To be fairly blunt, uh, my opinion is that he has got it wrong in, uh, in relation to structure plan policy D4, and, and, and I'm quite satisfied from the body of these papers that the applicant has demonstrated the need for a dwelling at a place of business, uh, not least of all considering the fact he's been living there for some time and the business is well established. So my, my opinion would be that uh, on that ground, uh, the planning office has got it wrong. Right, well, in which case, then, let us go to the uh, report, um, delegated report. Now, help me on the pages, please, Mr. Sutty. 40, 47, thank you very much. Um, and, no, where am I? The need for the dwelling, thank you, yes. Absolutely, 47. Uh, the need for the dwelling itself is discussed um, on page 50. Um, the need for the dwelling. The suggestion is that um, the, the po policy says it has to be essential at this particular location. Is that right? I got that. That's what we're looking for. It's, so it's got to be essential. I understand what you're saying, um, Councillor Dick, about it being desirable in the applicants, but, but I, I'm not completely clear that it is absolutely essential to be at this location. And uh, I would invite members to um, debate that at this stage. The suggestion here um, is that um, 
the, the case is not made because the applicant's business operates principally in the wider rural area. It's not absolutely on that particular geographic location. Um, I'm open to suggestion. Sorry. It's with regard to the actual uh, need for the dwelling in this area and the fact that in the reasons for um, requirement for a review body, there's reference to various uh, financial points in here, and um, the turnover of approximately £30,000. Now, in the planning guidance, is there not something that actually, you know, in the local plan or the structure plan, it says it has to be a sustainable business? Now, I would have concerns that £30,000 turnover might not have any profit. Does it mean it's sustainable? I don't know. Um, the other thing is, does it have to be in that area? Now, could it be in a, um, a yard in Dalbiti, for instance? Uh, because I know I've sat in cases before, and you have to usually have justification of a, at least one labour unit requirement on an area. Usually it's on the back of agricultural needs, which are usually based on the fact that for animal husbandry, it requires X amount of staff on site. Um, I'm struggling to see the justification of why that specific site is the site that it needs to be. Could it be a site 100 yards down the road? Could it be a site two miles down the road? And there's no justification actually given for that single site in the papers. So I have slight concerns that there isn't justification for a specific site in here. Uh, th thank you. Um, could I ask Mr. Sati if you could just um, help us with the issue about turnover and whether that actually is relevant? I would suggest you've got two issues which are separate. You've got obviously the existing agricultural contractors use at that site, which is entirely authorised as permission. The, the issue which obviously you have to consider as a local review body is whether or not it's essential that there be a house to service that business at that location. Absolutely. Yes, we must remember to keep focus that the issue is not about the running of a business from this particular location. It's the house, isn't it, on the place, because we've already given permission to carry on the contracting business in this particular occupation, in this particular place. Um, right, well, um, on, on, on the basis of uh, what you're suggesting, Councillor Hislop, um, and if we look again, um, I think, at the officer's uh, response with respect to that's Mr. Duncan's response, Mr. Sutton, can you again help me with the pages, please? Chair, that's on page 77. In fact, there we were talking particularly about the detail of design, weren't we? Rather about the principle of the house. Okay. Let's go back then, please, to um, the report itself, the need for the dwelling um, in the report uh, by the uh, officer on page 50. So well, that's quite a good idea. Um, right, well, we'll look at that just in a minute. Thank you. 
Um, the clerk's reminding me that we can see photographs, if you would like to see photographs. Sorry, I should have pointed that out earlier on. Um, Councillor Dick. My, my principal justification for suggesting that it's essential there is um, uh, the opening sentences in 4.3, that the operation of small-scale agricultural landscape contracting businesses at that site and equipment and plan is openly stored at that site. And that's the applicant's main reason for, uh, for uh, the quest for a do uh, dwelling. <clears throat> I would suggest that that um, uh, more than justifies the location uh, of the dwelling at that site. Well, it seems to me we've got a difference of opinion. Um, Councillor Hislop has suggested that um, it's possible to store equipment away from where you actually live. And I know perfectly well, I mean, you know, people do that in garages. They don't live in the same place as they have a garage. Um, I'm, I, I, I think I incline, actually, in this particular side of things to, to Councillor Hislop's view with respect to the actual location and need for a location of a house here. I don't see why that is necessarily justified on this basis. So I, I'm inclined to, to agree with Councillor Hislop on, on that particular um, uh, aspect. Um, now, help me on this. Does that deal with A? Does the proposal conform to the relevant development plan policies? Can, uh, Mr. Sutty. Um, just to hopefully assist in your debate for the last yes. bit, I'd, can I draw your attention to paragraph 4.8 as well? Because it's not just a house. This application also includes a workshop. And by my reading of what the appointed officer is saying here, he seems to say that the workshop in itself is acceptable, yes. but has to be refused as part of this application. Yes. But that would assist in security because it would allow the machinery, the expensive machinery, to actually be stored. Um, so as I read it, he's saying that that would actually require a separate application, but it seems in paragraph 4.8 to actually support the principle of that and have no objection to it. Indeed, and I certainly took that to be the case, that that was not, not up for argument here at all. That, and that's quite clear to the applicant that that would be... Um, Acceptable. In fact, I mean, I think we'd agreed that in the when we did that, dealt with that through the chair committee. I seem to remember that sort of uh, principle stood. Um, right, uh, members, um, we are then looking. I think um, uh, B. I think then actually falls if um, we are suggesting that the house itself is inappropriate at that location. It's not deemed to be absolutely necessary. That's the, the issue that we've got to deal, deal with. We've decided that, I think, if Councillor Hislop and I are in agreement, I suspect probably uh, there is a, uh, an alternate view, but Councillor Hislop and I are of the view that that stands as it is. B, therefore, falls. Is that correct? Um, in terms of strict plan policy D4, um, Yes, the first thing you would have to assess is really whether or not the agricultural contractor's use is a use which provides a, a need for a house. And then secondly, is it essential at that specific location that cannot be met by any other means? But in this particular instance here, that we've, we've sorry, A, it's A and B in that, in, in, in part A, we, we feel probably that we have decided section A there, and we're now talking about B, about the design and the visual impact of the proposal. So that then naturally falls. Thank you. C. Is there anything, um, Councillor Dick, that you would like to suggest is very specific to this particular application which would suggest to Councillor Hislop and I that we might change our views because of this specific application? I think my, my view had, and, and still is, that uh, this would not be an exception to policy given what I've said before. Um, Given the views that you've both expressed, um, I would argue it on uh, economic grounds uh, as an exception, if that's what we're, if that's a majority view, uh, that uh, economic grounds would be 
um, sufficient for me to say it would be an exception, and it was, it's uh, helping to sustain a business in a rural community. Right. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, we've got to look at, at policy, I think, and uh, Councillor Hislop. Chair, I would, if there had been an economic case um, demonstrating that this was essential at this location, I would have been willing to accept what Councillor Dick has said. However, I feel with the papers we've been provided, that hasn't been justified yet. Now, whether it could be and a better presentation could be put to the planning officer that would mean that it fell within the policy, I don't know. But currently, there is no... It needs to be there because A, B, C, D. It's more a stay there. It's where I want to be rather than where I need to be. And I think if you could demonstrate through better documentation uh, or given that kind of chance to put in a different presentation on a new application, I think it would be a different kettle of fish. But what we've got in front of us just now is the information we have. And I don't think there is has been demonstrated in the actual proposal that there is an essential need at this location. So I, I struggle a wee bit with that. If there had been some financial information that shows that by moving the house away from this location, the business would fail to be sustainable, I think we could then possibly look at it. However, as it states, it doesn't have that in it, and we have to look at the information we have in front of us and what the case officer had in front of him at the time. Thank you, Councillor Hislop. Admirable. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Dick. Just on that point, if you go to page 77 and, and point one uh, of the observation to the appointed officer, it states in, in uh, point 1A um, in the final sentence that it's not considered appropriate practice to seek amendments. Now, this is the kind of thing that could have been done during the, the, the application process. Councillor Dick, uh, can, can I just stop you there? Because yeah. I, I'm absolutely with you. I, I intend to come back to that particular right. issue. Okay. I promise you I'm not going to overlook that because that's important. That's the reason for the... The, uh, the reasons given in the notice of review, and so we will definitely come back and talk about that. Um, <clears throat> um, but in this particular instance, I, I'm again reiterating um, that other material circumstances which would indicate that planning permission should be granted as an exception to policy given to us in this information, uh, in this papers. I'm inclined to go along with Councillor Hislop's view that this particular application does not require us to take an exception to policy uh, to suggest that there is a reason for that house at this location. We're not given the reasons uh, to comply with policy. Right, now... Um, planning procedure was not followed, uh, it was unfair, it was undemocratic, given that discussions took place. There was no opportunity for the applicant to amend drawings if likely to be unacceptable. All drawings appear refused prior to determination. Now, if we then go to page 77, which I think is exactly what you were talking about, Councillor Dick, um, and look at the observations of the appointed officer, um, the suggestion is that the applicant and his agent were always advised that the principal development would be very unlikely to be supported. Um, there is a suggestion. I notice in the um, applicant's first application that he does agree that there has been pre-application advice. So clearly he, he is in agreement that there has been some level of discussion with the, uh, the, the, um, the planning officer beforehand. So um, uh, I... I 
assume that we can take it as read that everybody's in agreement that there has been a level of discussion and opportunity. Now, whether the discussion was fruitful is not actually for us to determine, um, but it's, it's the fact that it has happened. Have any members got any points to make about this one? Councillor Dick, you want? Yeah, I think it's simply that um, unless there is a continued dialogue, um, probably more helpfully in, in, in writing during the course of the application, we're going to get an inordinate number of applications falling, which we'd not have done had the applicant been aware of what is likely to be acceptable and, and, uh, and not. And that gives me considerable concern in this particular case. Uh, and if this is the, the process which we uh, use for all applications, it could cause considerable problems, um, not just for this but, uh, but others. But I'm particularly concerned about the reason given uh, in, in this particular case where it's not considered appropriate practice um, particularly this would typically require additional expenditure to the applicant. If he's not allowed to amend as they go along to, 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 to get to a level that's either sustainable or um, is, is he's satisfied he's going to result in, in, in refusal, how does that uh, cause him expenditure when he's then got to go through the whole process again? That doesn't make sense to me. Councillor Hickett. Yeah, if I was an applicant, No, actually, change the percentage of the house. I mean, that would deal with one, but it wouldn't deal with other. I mean, he went and got plans for changing the same house, still got refused. I think that would annoy me more. The fact that he didn't meet the first test, which was E4, structure plan policy, then to actually go out there and say to the applicant again, well, you're not going to get it because it doesn't meet policy, that would be my recommendation. But if you want to go and spend another three or four hundred pounds to amend the drawing, I must admit that would be concerning. I don't know if that was given to the applicant as clearly as it could have been, but actually the design wasn't the major issue, which it could be changed, but the major issue was the structure plan policy. And I note from the decision notes and the report how it was handled, the first one is structure plan E4, it's not a case of it's not a good design and it's failed to meet E4, it doesn't meet E4. The next question is the design isn't appropriate. And I think you have to get those in that order and the reasons why they are in that order in favour of this because that big issue is the structure plan E4 rather than the design which could be amended. Councillor Dick? I, th I think j just um, given the, 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 the discussion on the, the original or the, the, the necessity for it to be in the, on that particular site um, and during the debate council has mentioned the fact that um, had there been a, a evidence of financial sustainability at that site that, that may very well have influenced the, uh, the uh, D4 um, uh, policy. Uh, should that not have been, or was there any evidence that that was uh, passed on to the applicant? Because if it's, if it's coming down to sustainable development, which makes it essential that the dwelling house is on that site, uh, was he uh, made aware of that uh, during the application? Because it would concern me if it, if, if it didn't. If he's not been given any options as to how to overcome uh, structure uh, policy D4, uh, then I think that's a failing. Um. I think it's always possible that it's actually insurmountable. You know, it, it, sometimes it is, it is not surmountable. You can't get round policy. Um, it, it is sometimes occasionally the case that it's not to, to deal with the issue in the way that you were talking. I, I, I look at point number one, which is actually Councillor Hislop is suggesting that the applicant and his agent and his agent's note the applicant and his agent were always advised um, that the principle of development would be very unlikely to be hidden. Um, and, and I think probably it, any work will have been done against that background. I'm looking at you know, the suggestion is the planning process is unfair. And if, if, we, if the indication from the first planning application, as you see in uh, um, 11PP0008, had been 
uh, refuse in principle. Um, and you have you have taken professional advice, um, and you go through it with that background. I I suspect, reading this, I would I would suspect that there was sufficient indication of how this was likely to be looked at in terms of B4 activity. Um, so the suggestion then that um, um, there was no opportunity for action to amend drawings, I, I'm, I'm a bit doubtful about that. I don't think there's probably um, sufficient weight there uh, for us to consider changing the opinion here. Members? I think the statement uh, in the final sentence is not considered appropriate practice to seek amendments would suggest to me that there wasn't any opportunity given to amend the drawings. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly clear in my mind that um, given that statement, then the opportunity did not arise. Uh, thank you. Um, I am happy to go on to read the next bit where a proposal fails the first test. I think that's the proper bit. Um, right. Are we? Um, are we? Have we? Have we exhausted this particular avenue, members? Has anybody anything else to say on this particular item, which is the first reason that the applicant has given for the planning procedure, uh, the planning review? Thank you. Um, right. Then uh, we look at the. The other issues that he has raised, material considerations to ensure fairness. Mr. Sutton, can you help us with this? This is, I think, quite technical. New design and extra statement is online, not used in this determination. Can you just help us with that? Uh, the only, well, obviously, I'll draw your attention yes. to the um, page 77. Page where, where the appointed officer has made comments on that. Um, it is quite clear, and again, on page 97 of your papers, what you have there is the design and access statement. It's date stamped as when it was received, as the 19th of March. And I've double checked with the appointed officer and have had sight of the the audit, which is behind the screen, the, that document was scanned in on the 20th of March and it was published online on the 21st of March 2012. That's the only version that was received by the case officer within the determination period. That's the one that you have before you. It is clearly mentioned in the case officer's report and handling. And again, point two on page 77, uh, that is cross-referenced there. So. Uh, uh, I'm struggling to actually see anything other than what's before us, I'm afraid. Any members got any comments about item two? The suggestion that the advice is unclear. Um, I, I go back to the whole business of pre-application advice and the applicant accepts that she had pre-application advice. Um, I've got nothing else to add on this. Councillor Dick. Um, first of all, just a clarification. Uh, am I right in understanding that uh, design and access is required in uh, England and Wales, but it's not in Scotland, it's the design that is required in, in, in Scotland? I just want to be clear on that technical point. Uh, yes, that, that's something that's actually raised on page 78 by the appointed officer. Just for clarification, uh, a design and access statement is only required for a major application. This is not a major application. A design statement is required by virtue of the fact that it's in a, a national scenic area. Um, the agent um, thought it was a major application. I think that's stated in the, um, yes, in item, page 99. Paragraph 1.33. The application falls into the category of a major application. It was clearly a mistake made by the agent. So I don't think it matters particularly. Um, I don't think it's, it's particularly relevant. Um, um, you know, there was a full case made out there. So uh, I'm, I'm not convinced this is particularly relevant here. Councillor Dick. So just, just to be clear then, that the, 
what, what, you were, what the planning officer uh, was given was a design and access, which is more than you actually needed in this particular case, um, and, and, and you're satisfied that it was considered. Both points. Yeah. Um, certainly, as, as far as we're concerned, we must satisfy ourselves, um, and I, 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 I don't see anything in here to suggest that it wasn't. Um, I'm going back to um, yes, we're, 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 we're basically dealing with um, E here. What weight, if any, should be given to the claim deficiencies in the processing of application? Uh, noting the response to the appointed officer. Um, members, are, are you concerned that there have been problems here um, that would outweigh the decision, or are you happy with the, the level of detail we've got here and the justification uh, given to us in terms of action by the appointed officer? Members? Yeah, um I don't have any concerns, but my understanding is that you look at the case as determined by the officer. Therefore, any new information would be a new application rather than additional information to this. And it quite clearly states that the new revised design and access statement is put online on 22nd September. However, the decision by this council was 25th of June. So it wouldn't have been considered by the officer because it wasn't in in time. And as I sort of, they tried to hold to eight weeks, I think, or 12 weeks, depending on how they, I find it difficult to see why he would consider that as a material consideration of fairness when it actually was after the action of the planning officer. Thank you, Councillor Hizzet, thank you. Um, I'm conscious um, that uh, obviously the uh, response by uh, Mr. Richards um, to these issues is brief. Um, I, 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 feel, I feel there was a, I feel there was a bit of lack of Lack of total understanding of the system here. Um, to, 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 if you look at paragraph three, my request for this review is based upon a lack of fairness by the planning officer by not validating my application and by not providing adequate guidance and by not writing to my agent to correct any drawings. Um, are we satisfied that these, although you know, quite fairly and justifiably, justifiably but, but, but held in the applicant's thoughts are not actually relevant to uh, the handling of this particular application. Have you got anything to, to add to those? Or do you, we must make certain that we have taken these into account. Councillor Dick. My feeling from, from reading the papers was that, uh, that I would say it was, uh, other than the points I've raised under the, uh, the previous issues about um, Applicants for amendments and so on and so on throughout the process. I, I would say that, that other than that, um, I think couldn't find fault with it. Thank you, Councillor Dick. Councillor Hislop, do you? As far as I can read from here, all, well, I took it that it was validated because there's a letter went out to say uh, it wasn't unless they amended their plan to put, put a red line round the site and can't remember, there was a couple of red X's. Now I would take it that was validated once those were returned. They, they had a one month deadline and if it hadn't been but amended, the application would have fallen anyway. They would have taken it as not valid. So I think that has been dealt with. I have no evidence to say that there's any concerns or no fairness to it. I think it has been dealt with accordingly. I, I, I think that's very fair. I mean, the language used here, maladministration, actually is very strong language. And I, I want to say in this particular instance, I don't see any evidence of maladministration. I think I'm perfectly prepared to make that quite clear um, in this review. Um, I think it's been useful to look through and uh, be quite clear about all the details here. 
but I think there is probably um, um, I think a lack of full understanding of the system. Start the session, I hope. Right, members. Um, the final issue here, which I want to, to look at, is um, the suggestion of precedent, um, which is the Vicar Hill, Glen Reese case, um, whether or not we should be considering that um, um, as having material consideration in um, how we determine this review. Members got any views? Councillor Dick. I'm fully aware of the fact that we consider each application under the own merit. Um, However, the, the point that's being made here, and I would just ask for clarification on it, on the difference between that one and this one, because what we're concerning more than anything else is a level of inconsistency when we're dealing with uh, similar applications so that we can give the public a uh, uh, cause for concern that um, uh, one may be considered one way and another may be considered uh, another by a uh, planning officer. Could we just have, uh, I have read it, but just a clarification of the, the, um, what was different in that particular case demonstrating the essential need. I think the fundamental difference is that the officer suggested it was up for refusal and it was overturned by members. Um. Yeah, yes, that's correct. The Vicar Hill case was recommended for refusal by officers and it was a planning application and the decision to approve it prompted to uh, an exception. Councillor Hislop. Chair, um, we're always advised that precedent shouldn't be accepted because of the fact that the case is individual. Um, I've sat on one or two um, before a similar one um, in my own, within my own ward in the Castile area council. And I would say, looking by the size of the actual business for a bigger business, the justification was given that it was required to turn the down as a planning so I think one of the issues is each to his own. So whether you see that as a case, a case of each to his own. And I think one thing that does come across all of them is officers are consistent in a number of cases in the past have taken different positions. Couldn't possibly comment, Councillor <laughs> Slop. Um, right. Um, on that basis, um, members, I think that we have considered the main issues there with respect to the um, notice of review. Uh, I want to go back to make certain that we have covered everything that Mr. Richardson wishes to have covered. Um, I don't, the letter from Mr. Carrick, I think, is not relevant to this particular application. I got that right. That's the the, um, the issue of access. I've got thoughts about the issue of access, but I'm not certain that it is relevant to this. Welcome to that. As I understand it, the letter was actually in respect to a previous application, which I think was one that was withdrawn uh, in November 2011, uh, and it wouldn't automatically pass on to this one. Certainly, the, the case officer makes it clear that there were no representations which were unsolicited as a result of neighbour notification or adverts to this application. Thank you. Um, members, any other thoughts on this? In which case, um, I think that we are drawing now to decide whether or not uh, we intend to um, make a decision um, and in essence you've got uh, the option to uphold or to change and I'm in your hands unless you've got anything else you wish to discuss before we, we finally come to a decision. Councillor Dick. No, I, I think we've pretty much covered covered everything. Um, my feeling still is for the reasons previously given that could be overturned. And I feel that there is sufficient evidence for telling 
see that the dwelling has the potential in that site for selling for sustainability, albeit we don't have the figures other than the turnover figure in front of us. Um, given that the equipment and plant is stored in that site, that lends further weight to, to my suggestion that it should be granted on that basis or overturning should be granted on that basis. Um, and there are also my concerns over the uh, assistance and amendment throughout the process. And that would be the basis on which I would move that. Sorry, I momentarily lost co uh, concentration on the very last sentence. You that was with reference to uh, page uh, 77, which dealt with the, uh, the inappropriate or appropriate practice of seeking amendments uh, to design during the application process. And what were you saying about that? I'm sorry, I didn't completely follow you. Um, it was my feeling that that, that, um, that, that would, that would in, um, invalidate, maybe the wrong word, uh, the, the process or, or, or cause it to be overturned because insufficient uh, advice was given in order to seek amendments during the, the planning application process. Councillor Hedrick. Here, I take a different view. I don't think the information provided by the applicant is part of the general record. I think the, if you look at it, in what's in front of us, I have a burger van sitting in the way by and a cow feed sitting in the way across the section. That hasn't been demonstrated in the building or in the snap plan. I don't think there's a reason for a cow to snap because of that, and I would concur with the uh, Right, thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, I am inclined, um, Councillor Hislop, to fall in with uh, your opinion here as well. I don't feel that the case has been made uh, to pass the House at this particular location. Um, and on that basis, then, um, Councillor Dick, I think we're going to come to the conclusion um, that um, the, the re local review body will uphold the decision made by the planning officers in this particular um, planning application. Uh, do I need to make any other observations or comments that you feel have done the right thing in terms of governance? Have I got this absolutely right? No, I can confirm you've got it right. You can confirm and it's a proposal to the architect to bring in to the, the, the review or planning commission on the same grounds that the architectural right um, in regards to some hidden galleries such as farm premises. Chair, could I, if it's appropriate, have my assistant? I can con confirm that that would be in the minutes and the decision was issued on and stood after the Richard had had the LID. Thank you very much indeed, members.